Identity to me is something that's practical. It's like a dramatic role that you play out in the world. I've been interested in how to increase people's motivation for a long time, you know, and there's a nice literature on that. And part of it was as was created by Latham and Locke, Gary Latham and Edwin Locke. And they're looking at goal setting. That's how, how they described it as a means to improve business productivity. And so what they imagine that you have two teams and you get them to set goals, say, and one team sets goals for their corporate productivity and another team sets goals for their life. And then you match them head to head over some period of time and see which one comes ahead. And what happens is that the people who set goals for their life beat the people who set goals for the company. And so that's, re and, and then there's a variety of other literatures that support that kind of hypothesis, but it's, it's, it's very, very worthwhile thinking that through because what you want, if your company is structured properly, you want people in it who have a life. Right, so they're aiming at things that they think are valuable because they're just not going to be motivated, period, unless they're aiming at things they think are valuable. Learn to increase your motivation. Learn to set goals, but learn to set them effectively. Don't just set goals for your company or for your business. Set goals for your life. Aim for things that you believe are valuable, and the success you see in your work will come along with that. Link your everyday life to the ambitions of the long-term goals you set for the rest of your life. If you are miserable and unhappy, find what is valuable to you and let it go. Be willing to sacrifice some of the things you think are important, because those may very well be the things that are holding you back. Even if you think you can't get rid of something in your life that causes you pain, believe that you can. Many times after it's gone, you will find yourself happier, and it may sort itself out in the meantime. Don't settle on being happy with what you have. If you don't keep moving, you can become stuck in a state of chronic unhappiness. Problems never go away, so planning on reaching a certain state and stopping will never work. Remain active in everything that you do so that you can gain the tools you need to conquer problems as they arise. The full range of human experience can be broadly broken into two domains, which are the unknown and the known. The known is the state in which you currently live and can control the outcomes to the point that you are happy. The unknown can be scary and by nature unpredictable. Life is a balance of these two things and learning to take one with the other. You won't always have control of your situation, but don't waste your time never trying in the first place. Let's say you're miserable and unhappy. Okay, here's a cure. Find what's valuable and let it go. So we could say, well, maybe it's a relationship that you have. Maybe it's a relationship with your parents, right? And the relationship is pathological, but you're locked into it. You value it. And no wonder, because it's a relationship with your parents. And you're suffering terribly because of it. Well, what do you do? Maybe you let it go. It's a sacrifice. And the idea is that, well, that'll clear the future for you. Well, very frequently when people are suffering terribly, not always, because sometimes you just suffer stupidly, blindly, and without recourse, you know? You get cancer and then you die. So we have no idea how to deal with that. But sometimes the reason that you're suffering is because you just won't let go of the thing that's biting you. And you think, well, I can't let go of, and I've had clients like this. I can't stop communicating with my mother who phones me three times a day, every day of my life, and never says anything that isn't unbelievably critical and demeaning. I can't let that go. It's like, well, that's not such a good idea. The funny thing too, often when people let something like that go, it goes away, sorts itself out, and then comes back. So they don't even end up losing it. But unless they're willing to let it go, to sacrifice it, they make no headway whatsoever. And so one of the rules is, if people are impeding your development, you sacrifice your relationship with them, right? It's a very, very rough rule. You can say, well, you should be satisfied with what you have, but it's kind of really a stupid thing in some sense to tell human beings because no matter what you have, it isn't going to solve your fundamental problem. So the problem isn't going away and you can't just fool yourself into saying, well, what I have is great. You could say, I could have a hell of a lot less and that would be bad and most people have a lot less than me and I should be grateful for what I have. That's fine, that's perfectly reasonable, but you're stuck in this, you're stuck with this chronic sense of unfinished business and the reason for that is, well, you're permanently vulnerable, so how else would you, how could it be otherwise? And even if you've got your problem solved and there's three or four people in your family that by no means have got their problems solved, so the problem of problems 
never goes away. That's an existent, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing to know existentially too, because it helps you calibrate your life properly. Because you might be thinking, well, if I just got everything together, you know, I'd hit some plateau of satiation and stability and, and then I would just be there. It's like, no, that's never gonna happen. The underlying presupposition there is that in our phenomenological landscape, so that's the world as we experience it, complete with emotions and motivations and dreams, and so the full range of human experience, including the subjective and the objective, let's say, can broadly be broken into two domains. And one is the domain of things that are beyond our grasp and reach, and that's the unknown. The unknown emerges, when the unknown emerges, you tend to experience anxiety. And then there's the, the known, and I define the known very specifically, and, and very carefully, the known is the place you are when what you're doing result, produces the results you want. And I say want because that brings motivation and emotion into the game. So you're motivated to pursue something, you pursue it and what you want happens. Not only do you get what you want, but you get validation for the structure that governs your perceptions and your actions. Now, if you, you know, imagine that you're, you know, you're lonely and you approach a young woman in a social situation, attempting to make some contact with her, you want to alleviate your loneliness. And so you hope you make a good impression and you tell a joke, let's say, in a relatively awkward manner and you get rebuffed. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more content.